Monday, May 15th. Market analysis, Stan Ehrlich. Good morning. I'm starting a little bit late today because I wanted to see, given enough time, and it is 10, 12 California time, uh, if this market will break out of Friday's slightly bearish engulfing price range. And so far, it's not been able to get any higher, although it's trying right now, or lower than Friday's lows, which and now let's look a little more closely at the daily data chart is a sideways trading range of sub significant formation at the moment. The high that we had on April 18th could be, given it's a small pattern, the first shoulder high. The head of the formation has to be the highest and it is on May 1st. And last week, on Wednesday, we had a high so far, and May 10th, the last shoulder high. Timing is pretty good, adequate. The neckline is drawn across the bottoms between the, uh, on either side of the head, the lowest lows, and it's almost perfectly flat, but it's down at 403.80. So that is a critically important price unless the market starts to go up a lot. How much is a lot? Well, now it gets a little more complicated. First of all, you don't want to go above the first, the last shoulder high. That would create the double shoulder on one side, maybe, or just, just keep on going up. And there's a reason why it could. There is a gap up there to close. We gapped down from May 1st to May 2nd and haven't closed that gap yet. There's also... I'll be darn a gap below and not very far below. And that is the one I've been talking about lately at 40730. You need to get that low to close that gap. So we are locked between and now for well over a week. It's been seven trading days that we haven't gone up and closed the gap above or the gap below. And they're not that far apart. They're only about seven, eight points apart. So we are in a sideways trading range, period. It may be taking the form of a last shoulder. And in that case, well, then what's the minimum downside objective here? And that is going to be three, almost exactly 390. You take, and I'll rescale, and I'll do this a little bit differently for you. Just a second. Um, <clears throat> you take the highest high of the head, you measure down to where the neckline is, not the right or the left on the same day, straight down. How much is that? Well, that's a certain number of points or ticks or whatever. You take that measurement and you start from where you think the breakout's going to be on the neckline, and you measure straight down from there the same amount. And since the neckline is flat, it doesn't really matter whether it's a little left to the left or right. You're still going to get the same 390 minimum downside objective. Why is that important? It still does not <clears throat> kill the longer term bull trend since October 13th. It would not be, although serious, a crippling blow to the bull market at that point, 390, especially if it only took, say, a month or six weeks. Um, or less. I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to see a head and shoulder top. I don't think it's going to collapse. The bigger picture is the uptrend. And you have to take into consideration some other factors like the DIA, which we are about to take a look at. So I'm, I'm basically bullish, <clears throat> but momentarily disappointed because of those six, seven days of sideways. I can't be right. It can't be wrong. Uh, sideways price action. But at least I'm noticing some things that could cause some problems. Now, the DIA on a daily data chart is also close to yesterday's Friday's highs and did not make it below Friday's lows, which was an outside trading range, but slightly lower on a close, tiny bit, certainly not very convincing. We did not get oversold lately, <coughs> and therefore I can't fall back on that. Um, the DIA has slipped down on the average a little bit for a month or two, but certainly since October, 
And again, October 13th was a whopping big bullish ER engulfing. And you all see the QQQs in a moment signal. So I got to wait. But my bias is definitely bullish. We start closing on a strong note today or any time in the very next few days, it's going to start to kill all the bearish potentials and uh, reinstate the bullish ones that are basically still applying. Next chart is the QQQ. This is the daily data chart on the Qs. And I got to remind you guys, we did sell the high of the rally on August 16th of 22, the beginning of that huge last down leg until guess what October 13th where we had a bullish green ER buy signal that turned out to be so far the bottom of the 2022 bear market and beginning of what I call the 2023 bull market it really didn't get started to seek until um basically January when we were way down there pretty darn close to the previous lows so the QQQs have been doing great They've been making new highs for months, going way back into August of last year. They've been staying there. A little tiny dip in a bearish engulfing on Friday, and now we're about to ruin that by making a higher high and or a higher close if we can just get up a little bit more and stay there. But we haven't yet, So, but we're on the cusp of uh, removing the bearish potentials of uh, Friday's slightly bearish, mild uh, bearish engulfing. So I got nothing here at the moment that is particularly looking like a big bear move is about to start. But on the other hand, I'm not going to be a little premature. Let's look at uh, silver. Wow. You won't find, well, I hope you won't, a system that's going to tell you that the bottom on March 10th of the silver bear move is in the, about to turn, which it did until we have lately a double top formation with both of the highs of the double top being bearish red ER engulfing. This is all automated. You can, I just sat back and watched. I didn't do anything. I just made sure it was running correctly and all that. Sell signals and wham on Wednesday of last week, we had another complimentary, if you will, bearish sell signal. Thursday, it just fell apart. Um, Friday, there was some more downside follow through, but I started talking about oversold and a likely bounce or exactly what it's doing. It's coming back up a little bit, uh, feebly, I would say, so far. I expect a rally maybe back up to 24.77. That wouldn't do any damage to anything. That'd be a good place to consider going short, frankly. But I probably won't get a ER sell signal. The system is built to pick turning points, whether they last a few days, which would be enough for a profit, or months and months and months. Next symbol. I'm going to show you a few examples, four of them, five of them, it looks like, in the last few days. And there'll be stocks. I just showed you silver. So we had a sell signal Thursday. The market went down on Friday. It's come back up to the red dots, and we're short, and we're losing just a little bit on the current CYTX new short position. And there we got into it just about an hour or two of an hour ago. By the way, that rally high, and I know it didn't last more than 30 minutes, was exactly to the tick, our offer price for a new short. Right now, it's a it's a very minor loss. Mm, uh, less than 50 cents, it looks like, around 40, 50. Next chart is the daily on that again. And the next symbol is NEP. We bought it this morning because of a buy signal, and we also bought it on Friday. There's your green bullish engulfing. You have a what looks like a breakaway gap after an oversold condition came up stalled out for a couple of days and that now looks like it's about to make it back above resistance of six into 65 ballpark and even i would 69 69 looks like a very good possible level at which it could top out so the details on the one minute chart 
We bought it almost on the low of the break, got pretty close. And uh, the little blue line there for a few minutes is what we call baby blue. It tried to help get in at a cheaper price. Yeah, we forfeited a couple of pennies. Right now it's doing okay, no big deal. Next symbol is CTVA. It only got two more after this real quick. Here, we had a green buy signal on Thursday, Friday, I'm um, very sorry, Wednesday of last week. And the details to show you on the one minute chart are Wednesday of last week's minute by minute activity. And about midday, a little earlier than that, we had the bullish engulfing signal start. That's when it turns green. This is the price level at which we wanted to buy. And it opened well below that the next morning. So we bought it in the first minute of trading. It didn't make any money for the first day. It actually closed about break even, it looks like. It made some money and then dropped off and came back again on Friday. And this morning, up, up, and away. Doing darn good, 57.66. And we are in at about 56.84, 80 cents, give or take. Next symbol is APO, and I got one more after this. And when futures markets, a lot of good stuff in futures. Sorry to spend so much time today on this new technique. Uh, probably make it last a lot less time. Buy signal on Tuesday of last week. Details. Here's our buy signal on Tuesday of last week. The date was 5-9. Signal actually occurred relatively early in the day when ER1 got in when the first time it turned green right there. I don't think we have had a one minute of a loss. On our ER1 entry, again on Tuesday of last week, 5.9, period. The entry price for the ER3 is this dash green line. It took one, two, three days later, we came down, almost got the low of a break going straight down. Our little baby blue technique did help us get in a little bit better price. And it is now doing extremely well at 63.70 last. And we are long at 62.20, $1.50 ish. Last one, Zim. I'll go right to the meat of things. Whoop, didn't want to do that. Just a moment. Here we go. Buy signal on Tuesday of last week. Wednesday, and that's when we got long on, uh, yeah, right about there, I think it was, on Zim. So it was a little bit of a loss on the first day. The ER1 overnight. And that was it. Oh, there's a small time period Friday. But we have now had new highs for the whole trend since the buy signal. ER3 took three days to get in and bought almost the low tick exactly. Maybe it was for a couple of hours on Friday. And then was a loss for a very short period of time and closed with a small profit. And it took off like a bat out of hell this morning. And yay. And that's our last one. How about futures? Sorry to give you such a long-term delay here. S&P 500, same commentary as the uh, SPY. So I'll let it go at that. I like what I see. Interest rate futures bonds are coming down to test that support area again. Very important uh, that it would hold again. Uh, this is quite a trading range that's developing. Um, and the 10-year notes is the same thing, although it's more in the middle of that range. Uh, I would expect the support to hold. Now, bonds don't hold. It could pull the 10-year notes down through the support area here. And uh, that's something to watch for. So at the moment, I'm bullish on interest rate futures. I hope support holds. I might get a good buy signal very soon. And uh, long-term bullish, much higher levels uh, by the end of the year, at least probably in the next couple of months, I think. Crude oil. Double bottom formation. Last time I was down there was only about a week and a half ago in oversold condition. It's come back up to resistance and stopped around 72 and a half. Today's a little bounce. I don't know. I think this is going to go lower. The long-term trend is down. No particular great signals lately. Bearish, looking for new lows. Next, heating oil. Same situation. Resistance area being tested the last couple of days was oversold and it's bounced already. Neutral RSI territory trend since November of last year has been down. We just got a little bit of support left. Well, that's a very profound historical support level uh, that it bounced off handily. And I mentioned it well before that, I'm sure, at the price of uh, 2.1314.
When that's broken, eh, Tio del Fuego, it's going to head south big time. Next, um, NG, natural gas. Had a bicycle brand new on Friday. Today, the market opens with a low of 2.250. Our bid is 2.260. For all practical purposes, we bought the low tick this morning, right after the opening. The low of the day is a tiny bit below our bid price, which is the green dot, which is 2.20. That's a perfect entry. So far, so good. So far, so perfect. New high for the since the buy signal. On its way up, it looks like to me. First stumbling block is going to be around uh, 2.5, up to, of course, these cu last couple of important highs of 2.56, looks like. And uh, those are all pretty close together. So it might go through this whole little group here all in one day. And that could be this week. It's only Monday. This is just dead perfect, exactly the way the system is supposed to perform. Okay, I'll give it another second. <laughs> uh, next chart is uh, gold. We bought the bottom in all three gold, silver, and platinum back in February, March. Gold's been having a lot of problems lately. New highs, it's losing upside momentum. Yes, the high lows are higher than each other over time, but a lot slower than before. That's how tops are built. And the highs are higher than previous highs, uh, but we don't seem to have at the moment any significant upside follow through. Problems are in the silver. I've already shown you that. Double topped out, crashed, starting to work its way lower in my opinion. Not that gold and silver can't go in the opposite directions, but it's been a long time since I've seen that happen for any length of time. Um, so uh, neutral, looking for a top maybe, not quite sure yet. And next is silver. There's your double top formation and platinum. Okay. Platinum market, you could call it a double top. I have no, no sell signals unlike silver at the two highs. It did get overbought on the first one. It looks like we're about to make a lower low, but the lowest low between the two highs is your breakout. And then you measure down about the same distance, so the depth of the formation. And I'll just eyeball this at the moment. We're gonna get down to 968-ish for the minimum downside objective if this pattern worked correctly. Next chart, high grade. It's on its way down already. We had a bicycle, worked for two days, good enough for a small profit, I mean small. But nevertheless, profit. Um, that got broken pretty quickly and crashed real fast. Oversold conditions. Maybe it'll get back up to this little resistance of 3.82 and turn right back down again at that price level. We're super close to it. That's what I'm thinking is about to happen. Next is soybeans. Buy signal lasted a few days. And that was a couple of weeks ago. Nothing new here. This market is trying to be very convincing about turning into a complete bear trend. Meanwhile, we haven't got any lower lows for more than a month or month and a half or any higher highs for the same time period or more. And it's a gigantic, big sideways trading range. And no other comments. Bean oil tried to hold up, tried to bounce off support and did for a few days or a week or so, began to break down no buy signal work more than a couple of days, which is okay. In other words, small profit potentials. Not all of my buy signals can be as good as the one on soybean oil on 12, 12, 22, um, or the good sell signal, sell signal on September 9th or 22. And that's a false buy signal, lost a little money on that. But they're not all perfect, to say the least. Uh, what do we got? Soybean meal. I think it's going to turn down like almost like today and make new lows. Next, um, buy sig two buy signals don't really, in so far, not the greatest. I really can't tell you honestly that if you bought it on this day, you'd still be holding it after that kind of a break right there, Friday's lows. But if you were still long, this is very encouraging. But we need to close above uh, 600 in order to claim that I got a buy signal, well, I still could, at the low of the move. 
but the way this system works, I would have got bumped out at the very, very latest uh, Friday with maybe even a very small loss. Next chart. Um, wheat. Okay, this is good enough. We bought the bottom of the break to the exact day. Now, today is all is about the second highest close for the move up, and we just might see higher highs on a closing basis, which would make me feel real good because this is a good signal. Nothing wrong with it. Next. Sell signal almost on top, coming up again. Not proving me right at all so far. That buy signal sure as heck took off like a rocket. That's great. Huh. And that one as well over here. And eh, a few good signals. Now, uh, I'm I'm bullish. I can't help it because the trend is up. Um, looking for new highs. That live cattle. We had a buy signal last week on Miss Piggy. Hogs. It um, got... We got into the trades on the signal day and ER3s the next trading day and had a little bit of trouble on Thursday, started to resolve itself on Friday, and look what happened today. We have a new high since the buy signal. We have a probable close above previous highs of the rally since the buy signal Tuesday of last week. And I'm real tickled piggy about this trade. It's working out really great so far. Next. OJ, oversold, back into the support of the old pennant formation, starting to work its way back up. So probably we saw low on Thursday, Friday of last week, and it's probably going to attack all of this resistance area up here, and we'll see what happens when it starts to get up to 260 or higher. Next chart is Coco. We had a sell signal on Friday. Today we have lower lows, and it looks like a slightly lower close. This sell signal is doing great. I got no problems with the way it's acting so far. Coco. Next one is Sugar to Sweet. Possible double top. Outside up day at the moment. Friendly. Kind of have to wait for um, a little bit more decisive something or other. So I'll put the sweet aside for the moment. And we're back to the E-mini. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Talk to you tomorrow. Profitable trading to you.